Welcome to AP Review. This is review for AP Computer Science Principles. I'm Mrs. Julie Alano and I teach at Hamilton Southeastern High School in Fishers, Indiana. Let's get started. So first off, remember that you have access to the exam reference sheet the entire time during the AP exam. You can find this on the AP website and you can see it scrolling here on the screen. It is a whole packet that describes the code that's used on the questions on the AP exam because it is the AP pseudocode, so it may not be the language you learn during class. Some questions may use blocks and some questions may use text, as you can see there on the screen. Remember that you can also access the questions I'm about to go over on the PDF on the upper right of my screen right now, or you can also access them in the description of the um, YouTube video. So let's get started. We got 11 questions to review today. First question, a database of information shows at a concert venue contains the following information, the name of the artist performing at the show, the date of the show, and the total dollar amount of all tickets sold. Which of the following additional pieces of information would be most useful in determining the artist with the greatest attendance during a particular month? So greatest attendance, so total dollar amount of food and drinks has nothing to do with greatest attendance, so I've eliminated that choice to begin with. So I'm trying to find the artist with the greatest attendance. So here we have, um, again, the information up above. And so if we have the name of the artist and the date of the show, we have other things here. So the average ticket price might help us in figuring it out. The length of the show in minutes or the start time of the show don't really have anything to do with how many are in attendance. But if we have the total dollar amount and we have the average ticket price, we could determine how many people were in attendance. So that's our answer, A. Question two, a video game character can face toward one of four directions, north, south, east, and west. Each direction is stored in memory as a sequence of four bits. A new version of the game is created which, in which a character can face toward one of eight directions. So we started with four and now we moved on to eight. So adding Northeast, Northwest, Southwest, and Southeast to the original four possibilities. So which of the following statements is true about how the eight directions must be stored in memory? So again, we're looking for the true statement about eight directions stored in memory. So here, three of the questions say four bits are not enough. And then the last one clearly says four bits are enough. So how many bits, how, how much can you hold with four bits? So remember, um, on the AP exam, you can write on your questions or you can write on your scrap paper. And so you want to maybe write down your bits and your powers of two. So for four bits, remember, we can put zero or one for each of them. And so if we had them all as ones, we would be able to have eight plus four plus two plus one, which adds up to 15. And so therefore, that clearly would be able to hold eight values and so four bits are enough to hold our eight directions so jot down remember your binary numbers there and how bits how many bits can store things and you should be able to come up with it yes four bits are enough more about binary now on question three consider the following numeric values so we have two binary and two decimal which of the following lists the values in order from least to greatest so the best thing to do here is convert those binary numbers so again back to writing that down so four bits, we know that each bit represents a power of two. So I wrote my powers of two, eight, four, two, one. And so then I can put in my numbers. So the first binary number is one, zero, one, one. So I add up eight plus two plus one. So that first binary number is 11. Second binary number, which is one, one, zero, one. That means I add up eight plus four plus one, which is 13. By getting 11 and 13, it makes ordering those numbers a breeze. And so we know we would go from five, 11, 12, 13. And so we can eliminate uh, that choice D. We know we need five next, but we don't want 12 right after it. And then looking at those two options, we don't want 12 at the end. So therefore our answer is A. All right, question number four. A user wants to save a data file on an online storage site. The user wants to reduce the size of the file if possible and wants to be able to complete restore the file to its original version. So there's your keywords there. Reduce it, but completely restore to the original version. Which of the following actions best supports the user's needs? So do we want, um, I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate choice D, uploading the original file without any compression algorithm. That really doesn't do us any good because we wanna reduce the file size. So D is not a good option. Um, compressing the file using both lossy and lossless compressions 
Don't think I want to use two different things, lossy and lossless. Clearly, that's the key to this question is what's the difference between lossy and lossless? We want to restore the file to its original version. So we don't want lossy. We want lossless. We want to be able to have that file back. So answer A is the correct answer. Compress it with a lossless compression algorithm. All right, question number five. A student is creating a website that is intended to display information about a city based on a city name that the user enters in a text field. Which of the following are likely to be challenges associated with compress processing city names that users might provide as input? We need to select two answers here. So let's take a look. Again, the key is the city name that the user enters as a text field. That means the user could type in anything for the city. So they might attempt to enter other things, right? So they might attempt to use, um, and so again, we're, we're looking for challenges for how we have to process this. So again, processing. So if the user enters incorrect values, it's a problem. So if they enter using a website to search has nothing to do with our question. So we'll eliminate that choice immediately. And so then here we're looking at, they might enter abbreviations, they might enter misspelled the city, and they might be slow at typing. Okay, if they enter abbreviation, that's gonna be a problem because we're looking for the city name, not an abbreviation. So that seems to be one of our answers. And then if the user might misspell the city, again, they can type in anything they want. That's a problem. So that looks to be our other choice. If they're slow at typing, it doesn't matter. We're still just trying to process it. So our two answers here would be B and C because abbreviations and misspellings would cause a issue with processing it. All right, question number six. If you ever need to read the question, you can always pause the video as well. A camera mounted on the dashboard of a car captures an image of a view from the driver's seat every second. Each image is stored as data. Along with each image, the camera also captures and stores the car's speed, the date and time, and the car's GPS location as metadata. Which of the following can be best be determined using only the data and none of the metadata? So we're not worried about that metadata. We're only worried about only the data, which is an image from the view from the driver's seat. So average number of hours has nothing to do with hours because we're just looking at the view. The our average speed, Again, we don't have that metadata. All we have is the view from the car. The distance traveled, again, we don't know that, but we could see the number of bicycles the car passed because we have that image data, so we could see those bicycles. So that's your answer there, answer D. All right, question number seven. A large spreadsheet contains information about the schedule for a college radio station. A sample portion of the spreadsheet is shown below. We're looking over here at the question at the right. A student wants to count the number of shows that meet both of the following criteria. It is a talk show and is on Saturday or Sunday. For the given row in the spreadsheet, suppose genre contains the genre as a string and day contains the day as a string. Which of the following expressions will evaluate to true if the show should be counted and evaluates to false otherwise? So again, we want to count it if there's a talk show and if it is on Saturday or Sunday. Okay, so we take a look here. And so we clearly know we want both those things. So we need to see here the fact that we're talking about the genre and then and or, or the day. So we need it to be a talk show and we want it to, it says we want it to meet both of these criteria. So we need that to be an and likely. And then over on the right, again, we have ands and ors. Those are your biggest differences in these questions. So let's take a look at first, we need both to meet the criteria. So that means, I need the and on the left. So I eliminate choice C and D. And then if I take a look up there in that question again, it says Saturday or Sunday. So therefore I need the or on the Saturday or Sunday part. So that easily gets me to answer B. So just pulling out those key parts of the question can help on that one. All right, question number eight. Consider the following code segment, which is intended to store 10 consecutive even integers, beginning with two in the list called even list. Assume that even list is initially empty. So we have the value i is set to one and it repeats 10 times and we have to fill in that missing code. Which of the following can be used to replace the missing code so that the code segment works as intended? Notice on the right here that I have given you a excerpt from the exam reference sheet to help us realize that the, how append works. So append says append to a list of value. 
So the length, and remember that the length of the list is increased by one and value is placed at the end of the list. So it puts value at the end. So it just keeps adding values each time. And again, um, it just keeps appending to the list. We need to append the even integers beginning at two. So that's really the key to this question is how can we get all the even integers beginning at two? Because the append seems to be correct um, in all the questions, just slightly written a little different, okay? And so that value is what's different in that append. So if I starts at one, then I really don't want to append I because I in the first in A would be one. And then in this in B that I just did, I would be three. So clearly A and B appended one and three, not what we want. On C, it looks to be correct because it appends two times I, which would be two. And then it adds to I. On D, it adds to I first, which makes I two and then takes two times I. So that would make it four. So that one doesn't seem to be correct either. So I think our correct answer there is C, where we append two and then we add one to the I. All right, on to question number nine. The list, list one is sorted, is a sorted list of numbers that contains 700 elements. The list two is a sorted list of numbers that contains 900 elements. Let X represent the maximum number of list elements that will need to be examined when performing a binary search for a value in list one. And let Y represent the maximum number of list elements that will need to be examined when performing a binary search for a value in list two. So how many bits does it take to represent 700? That's the key. We're talking about binary search. And so bits help us to determine how many things we have to check. So how many bits does it take to represent 700? And how many bits does it take to represent 900? And remember, bits go up by multiplying by two. So earlier we had the one, the two, the eight, the four, the eight. So count by twos. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. You can write this down on paper during the test. 128, 256, 512, 1024. So just double the number every time. And so we notice that we go from 512 to 1024. And so 700 and 900 are both between there. So if we look at the answer choices here, we see we're looking at is X and are X and Y equal? Are they approximately 10 less, 13 less, or 200 less? So again, we're talking about binary search. You can determine how many checks a binary search has by figuring out how many bits does it take to represent the total number of elements in the list. So since 700 and 900 are both between 512 and 1024, that means it's going to take approximately the same amount of checks. So therefore, we can eliminate 10 less, 13 less, 200 less. That means they're going to be approximately equal. And so the answer is A. All right, two questions to go. A teacher stores the most recent quiz scores for her class in the list scores. The first element in the list holds the maximum possible number of points that can be awarded on the quiz. And each remaining element holds one student's quiz score. Assume that scores contains at least two elements. Which of the following code segments will set the variable found to true if at least one student scored the maximum possible number of points on the quiz and will set found to false otherwise? So again, that first value is the max. Did any score, any student score the maximum if possible? So that's what we're looking for here. Again, from the exam reference sheet, Remember that um, list I refers to the list element at list index I. The first element in a list on the AP exam is at index one. So you see here in our question uh, in C and D, it will immediately set found to true since it will compare max to itself. So in both of these, it compares to itself. And so it'll immediately say it's true because we are looking at it sets max, and so it compares max to itself. Because remember, the first value in the list is the maximum. So those two get eliminated. And then C will not check the last score due to the greater than or equal to. So it will never get to that last score and be able to check it. So that's a bad choice. And so that means our answer is A, which will go through all of them and compare, again, everything after that maximum to see if a student hit the max. All right, last question. A researcher is analyzing data about students in a school district to determine whether there is a relationship between grade point average and number of absences. The researcher plans on compiling data from several sources to create a record for each student. 
The research has access to a database with the following information about each student. So you can see that on the left. And then on the right, the researcher also has access to another database with the following information about each student. So you can see the data there. And so upon compiling the data, the researcher identifies a problem due to the fact that neither data source uses a unique ID number for each student. So that's the key to this question. Which of the following best describes the problem caused by the lack of unique ID numbers? So here's the key to this. We're looking at students have the same name, same grade point average, same grade level, or same number of absences. So which one of these is really important? Well, grade point averages can be the same, grade levels can be the same, number of absences can be the same. But if they have the same name, we need some way to identify that student with the same name because a ton of them are gonna have those other things that are the same. It's the name that we need to be able to say, oh, this name is this ID. So that is the key to this question and that is our answer A. All right, thanks for joining me today. Here are the topics that we covered. So if you need to review these further, you can go to AP Classroom and watch AP videos on these topics, binary numbers, data compression, extracting information from data, using programs with data. We talked about lists and binary search. Again, check out those AP daily videos if you need to review these topics further. And thanks for joining me today.